Lila and Jordan's bond flourished within the school's corridors, where they shared a desk for half a decade. Their school days were rich with softly spoken secrets, shared answers during tests, and exchanged snacks from the cafeteria. They made their way home together daily, parting at the crossroads with a vow to reunite the following day. Their families were closely knit. With their parents collaborating professionally and often visiting each other's homes, bringing Lila and Jordan along. Despite their intimacy, Jordan often playfully teased Lila about her short hair, affectionately dubbing her a tomboy, which always lit a spark in her. In return, Lila would chide him about the perpetual dirt under his nails and his silly expressions, which she feigned to loathe. This playful quarreling was the soundtrack to their youth. Their parents humorously suggested that the pair might eventually become a couple. A prediction that came true, post high school, they attended the same university, reveling in their newfound independence, they spent countless evenings exploring the city, watching sunrises, and creating memories by the bay with sticks laden with marshmallows over a warm fire, their connection grew stronger away from their parents' watchful eyes, and it wasn't long before Jordan proposed, Lila agreed, on the condition that they complete their studies before the wedding. Their nuptials were modest and heartfelt, marked by the exchange of vows and the symbolic release of doves, the celebration continued at Jordan's family home with close family and friends, filled with laughter, heartfelt toasts, and reminiscing. When they embarked on their careers as engineers, they achieved notable success. However, it was the quiet, everyday moments at home that resonated most deeply, particularly for Lila. She often caught herself admiring their wedding photo. A testament to their youthful joy and simplicity, with Jordan in a casual shirt and herself in a summer dress. Beside it, photographs with children echoed with laughter, capturing moments of joy, not with their own children, but with those close to their hearts. The echoes of a family they yearned for but couldn't have were brought into their home by her cousins, whom they frequently babysat. Lillian had always dreamed of a home filled with the sound of little feet, but destiny had other plans. The devastating news that she could never bear children shattered her dreams irreparably this harsh. Reality often overwhelmed her, filling their quiet home with her cries. Jordan, ever the steadfast support, stood by her through these tumultuous times with a strength and grace few could muster. His love for Lillian never wavered, becoming a testament to the depth of their connection. The absence of their own children did not lessen his devotion, if anything, it only strengthened it. Jordan mastered the art of navigating Lillian's emotional upheavals, maintaining a serenity that often left her. Bewildered, she struggled to understand how he could remain so composed during her tumultuous outbursts, however, Jordan was not without his limits, intense arguments could erupt when those limits were reached in moments of doubt, Lillian sometimes accused him of remaining with her only for the prospect of inheriting her family's prosperous farm. Suspecting his loyalty was motivated more by the promise of land than by love, yet, when faced with such accusations, Jordan responded with laughter. Not anger, his affection for Lillian shielding him from offense raised in a military family, Jordan was no stranger to direct communication, his father, Henry, a 40-year veteran, had instilled in him not just discipline and duty, but a profound respect for the importance of protecting and valuing women Jordan's dedication to Lillian was steadfast. His conviction undeterred by those who questioned his commitment to a woman unable to bear children, his faith and traditional values, deeply. Influenced by his mother, Alice, played a significant role in his resilience, he believed their union was meant to be entrusted in the purpose behind their struggles. When Lillian and Jordan faced the reality of not being able to have children, the unwavering support of their parents was a constant source of strength. Alice, with her wisdom and humor, reminded Jordan of the joys and challenges of parenthood, encouraging him to cherish their time together. Over time, Lillian began to accept the likelihood of not having children, when the years passed, she focused on her career, rising through the ranks of the company where she had once been an intern, finding success and fulfillment in her professional life. Despite her success and the love she shared with Jordan, Lillian often felt a sharp pang in her heart at the sight of young families, a vivid reminder of the joy she longed for but could not have. On the evening of her 30th birthday, Jordan took her to a quaint, romantic, restaurant for a special celebration. Sitting across from him, Lillian felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude for Jordan, her steadfast support and anchor in the tumultuous sea of her unfulfilled maternal dreams. His encouragement helped her appreciate the myriad other joys and purposes life held. Their intimate dinner was interrupted by a call from Whitney, a friend from high school. 
who excitedly wished Lillian a happy birthday. Before Lillian could respond, Whitney eagerly shared her news of expecting twins, her voice bubbling with laughter and excitement, Lillian, feeling a twinge of sadness, momentarily set aside the phone to compose herself, with forced cheerfulness, she congratulated Whitney, who seemed oblivious to the sensitivity of her timing, Whitney's enthusiasm, while genuine, inadvertently deepened Lillian's sense of loss, yet, Lillian bore no grudge. She understood her friend's joy wasn't meant to inflict pain, after more animated conversation, Whitney remembered the reason for her call and wished Lillian well, expressing hope for her happiness at the news, Lillian, masking her feelings, congratulated Whitney genuinely, even though the conversation underscored her own deep-seated yearnings, Lillian's graceful handling of the situation reflected her resilience and ability to find happiness in others' joy, despite her own heartache, the strength, supported by Jordan's unwavering love and the richness of their life together, underscored the complex tapestry of human emotions and the capacity for empathy even in the face of personal sorrow Lillian managed to maintain a carefully cheerful tone in response to Whitney's excitement, despite the turmoil churning beneath her composed exterior, she resisted the urge to reveal the true impact of Whitney's call, which had cast a shadow over her birthday celebrations, not wishing to diminish Whitney's happiness or add to her own stress. She ended the call with grace and turned to Jordan, seeking comfort in his empathetic gaze, quite the birthday surprise, she remarked, a hint of dryness in her voice when she reflected on the conversation, Whitney, slightly younger and smaller, had often been bullied in school, leading Lillian to speculate that these experiences contributed to Whitney's occasional insensitivity, Lillian, protective and loyal, chose to overlook these moments for the sake of their long-standing friendship. At Whitney and Nathan's wedding, where Lillian had played a significant role, she found Nathan charming, however, Jordan held a different opinion of Nathan, remembering him as an oddball from their middle school days, this view was cemented by disturbing incidents, such as Nathan's cruel treatment of bird nestlings and his questionable behavior around a vending machine and Jordan's reservations about Nathan had prompted him to caution Whitney before their marriage, suggesting she reconsider her choice. Despite his doubts, Whitney and Nathan's marriage proved resilient, now eight. Years strong in expanding their family, Whitney's pregnancy brought new challenges. Especially with Nathan frequently away on business as a used pickup truck dealer, his absence made daily life more difficult for Whitney, particularly when she navigated the physical demands of pregnancy while caring for their son Peter and preparing for the arrival of twins. Lillian's reflection on these dynamics underscored the complexities of friendship and the unspoken tensions that sometimes lie beneath the surface. Despite these challenges, her bond with Whitney endured, a testament to the depth of their connection and Lillian's capacity for empathy and understanding. During Nathan's business trips, Whitney often sought Lillian's company for companionship, leaving Lillian feeling drained after their visits. This particular day, Jordan's absence compounded her exhaustion, he hadn't returned from work, and his phone went unanswered. Jordan's recent pattern of late nights was unusual and unsettling for Lillian. She waited until 11.00 p.m. for Jordan, who explained his tardiness as being due to an urgent project requiring extended hours to meet a client's accelerated deadline, Lillian, too weary to question further, accepted his explanation, albeit with a hint of unease, in their professions, demanding schedules and tight deadlines were commonplace, but Jordan's consistent late returns began to form a troubling pattern one night, driven by a growing sense of unease. Lillian passed by Jordan's office only to find it deserted, raising further doubts about his explanations. Confronted with Jordan's late arrival once again, Lillian chose not to press him, the discrepancy between his stories and her observations sowed seeds of doubt, deciding to confide in her mother, Jackie, for guidance, Lillian hoped for reassurance, however, Jackie's response to her concerns was unexpectedly reserved, revealing complexities in her own understanding and experiences with relationships. Jackie's reaction highlighted the nuanced challenges of navigating trust and communication. Within close relationships, leaving Lillian to contemplate the delicate balance between faith in her partner and the instinctive concerns that had begun to surface, Jackie whispered urgently, Lillian, think about it, it seems like Jordan might be drifting away, perhaps there's someone else. Lillian managed a smile, attempting to lighten the atmosphere, do I look that undesirable? She joked, it's not about looks, Lillian. You're gorgeous, Jackie comforted her, but attraction goes beyond the surface. 
What then? Lillian inquired, growing more confused, it's the essence you radiate, the spark in your eyes, the confidence in your walk, you've lost the vibrancy I remember, life's hurdles have burdened you too much, Jackie noted with worry and slight annoyance, Jordan loved a vibrant, energetic woman, remember who you were when you both fell in love, Jackie advised, Lillian reassured her mom, Jordan has been by my side since childhood, remember the farm incident, he cared more about supporting me than the mess. He's not superficial, Jackie remained unconvinced, all right. But don't say I didn't warn you if things turn sour, she replied, leaving Lillian to reflect on her words. Days later, with Jordan still not home by 10 p.m., Lillian's worry escalated. She drove to his usually parked office, only to find it empty, panic rising. She dialed his number, hey, are you coming home soon? She asked casually when he answered, yeah, I'll be home shortly, don't wait up. Jordan said, sounding exhausted. Calm, still at work, Lillian probed for the truth, yes, just finishing up, go to bed, he replied, offering little comfort. After hanging up, Lillian felt a surge of anger and disbelief. Jordan's deceit was evident, leaving her heartbroken and confused. Driving home, she was overwhelmed by a mix of emotions and doubts. Back in bed, sleep was elusive when she braced for the inevitable confrontation. The night lingered a stormy prelude to their upcoming face-to-face -face when Jordan finally arrived. Showered, and was about to join her, Lillian couldn't hold back, how was your day, Jordan, she asked, voice steady and awake, ready to confront the truth, her voice carried a weight that signaled her question was anything but casual, surprised to find her alert, Jordan felt the seriousness of her using his full name, the air tensed around them, her erratic breathing a sign of her inner turmoil, do you love me, Jordan, Lillian cut in, not waiting for an answer to her earlier question, instantly. Jordan assured her, of course, I do, and embraced her, trying to offer comfort. What's troubling you, Lillian? You seem anxious, he inquired, picking up on her distress. Lillian inhaled deeply, gathering the courage to address her concerns. Jordan, it's not just work keeping you out late, is it? Her voice fluctuated between hope and skepticism, seeking the elusive truth. Jordan paused. The weight of their discussion pressing on him, admitting there was indeed more, he said, you're right, Lillian. Aside from work, I've been involved in a special project, revealing his conflicted emotions, Lillian's heart skipped as a whirlwind of questions arose, what kind of project, Jordan, what's happening, she pressed, her fear evident, Jordan, moving closer and holding her hands, struggled to explain, it's a big opportunity one couldn't ignore, it could change our lives, I need a little more time before I can tell you everything. Can you trust me a bit longer? His eyes pleaded for her understanding, in Jordan's earnest gaze, Lillian sought the comfort of the man she married, amid her turmoil, she spotted a glimmer of hope in his sincere request, with a hesitant nod, she chose to trust the foundation of their relationship, all right, Jordan, I'll trust you, but don't leave me out in the dark, we're in this together, she said, her voice soft but determined, her heart cautiously hopeful for their future, adjusting to Jordan's late nights. Lillian tried to find moments for them, especially in the quiet early mornings, Jordan remained supportive and cheerful, his secretive project added a layer of mystery to their conversations, despite Lillian's subtle inquiries, Jordan maintained a veil of secrecy over his nocturnal activities, leaving Lillian to stew in her unease, one day, upon returning from her job, Lillian encountered Mrs. Bennett, their normally vibrant neighbor, who seemed burdened with concern, good evening, Lily, how are things, Mrs. Bennett inquired, her voice laced within, Unusual caution, when she embraced Lillian warmly hesitantly, all's well, thanks, and you, Lillian replied, picking up on the subtle tension in Mrs. Bennett's approach, oh, just keeping on, Mrs. Bennett brushed off before shifting gears, Lily, dear, may I ask you something a bit personal, peeped in a tad worried, Lillian consented, and they settled onto a nearby bench at Mrs. Bennett's request, citing her weary legs, once seated, Mrs. Bennett's voice dropped to a conspiratorial whisper, it's about Jordan, everything okay between you two, any troubles, Lillian, caught off guard, reassured, no, everything's fine, why do you ask, Mrs. Bennett hesitated, then confided, it's likely nothing, but I saw something odd the other night, insomnia, you know, led me to take a walk for some air, that's when I noticed Jordan arriving home unusually late, Lillian cut in, he's been swamped at work lately, yes, I presumed as much, Mrs. Bennett acknowledged, but what caught my attention was when he got out of the 
Car, his phone rang, it seemed like an ordinary call, perhaps a reminder about groceries, milk, eggs, and the like. This revelation added a layer of mundane reality to Jordan's late-night returns, yet it did little to clarify the shadows of doubt that had begun to form in Lillian's mind. But that seems strange to me at one in the morning, I don't want to cause difficulty, and I didn't plan to eavesdrop. It just seemed out of the ordinary, and I thought you should know, Mrs. Bennett said, her. Observation taking on an air of mystery, Lillian was back in the kitchen shortly after midnight. Surrounded by unresolved questions, Jordan walked in, going about his routine without saying anything, and met with Lillian's questioning stare, Hi, what's up with you still? You shouldn't stay up late waiting for me, he murmured, sounding worried. Lillian was asking inquiries in a whisper since she was at her breaking point, in an attempt to be truthful, she said, Mrs. Bennett saw you last night, getting a call about groceries. Jordan answered right away, with a dejected expression, he walked. Back, with his patience wearing thin, he questioned, what do you want to know, Lillian? She pressed for clarification, asking, who needed groceries so late? Jordan slumped on the window sill, exhausted, I'm too worn out to have this discussion, in a weary voice, he said, I can't explain the groceries right now, is this the nature of your covert work, purchasing food? It was evident how frustrated and incredulous Lillian was. Jordan said, yes, without providing any more information, feeling confused and suspicious, Lillian paced the room, Jordan was silent for a moment, then tried to comfort her, if you're worried about another woman, listen, there isn't one, he pleaded sincerely, it would be easier if you trusted me, and you still won't tell me who the groceries are for, her distress was echoed by Lillian's words, Jordan said, strong but kind in his tone, not yet, anxious and disbelieving, Lillian laughed, breaking the tension for a little while, Jordan, what is this, do you have someone in? Your care, is that all? She asked in jest, Jordan's side, something like that. Yes, half joking, Lillian pushed a little harder, and is this person a stunning woman with a captivating presence? Jordan drew her in close, his warmth allaying her concerns, Lillian, no, which tales have you been crafting lately? He gave her a gentle kiss and taunted, you've been reading those romance novels again, haven't you? Lillian became silent in his arms, her earlier fears dissipating with the steady pounding of his heart, at this precise moment, the deep connection between them eclipsed her concerns and jealousy, Lillian recognized the folly of letting suspicion and rumors undermine the trust and bond they had nurtured, embracing the comfort found in their relationship, she chose to focus on their connection rather than let doubts create a divide, deciding to leave the mystery of Jordan's night job behind. She avoided dragging her mother into a whirlpool of unnecessary worry and speculation about Jordan's fidelity, instead, Lillian redirected her efforts towards the upcoming Christmas celebrations, determined to make them unforgettable and make up for the previous year's letdown, when illness had kept them confined and away from their festive plans, this year, buoyed by the anticipation of a joyful holiday, Lillian planned a special surprise for Jordan, a trip to the Bahamas. Discovering affordable tickets seemed like fate, and she looked forward to Christmas Day to share the surprise. Neatly placing the tickets in a decorative envelope for the grand reveal, the Christmas celebration was to be held at Lillian's parents' home, a place rich in cherished memories for both her and Jordan, resonating with laughter and stories of their youth. Dressed for the occasion, Lillian admired her reflection, ready to join the gathering downstairs, by the Christmas tree, Jordan. Looking like he stepped out of a holiday advertisement, was arranging gifts, he wore a dark green cable knit sweater, a gift from his mother, adding to the festive spirit, announcing her readiness, Lillian received warm compliments from her mother-in-law, who playfully marveled at Lillian's elegance, Jordan, too, complimented her, his arm naturally wrapping around her waist as they finished arranging the gifts under the tree, with the envelope containing the tickets subtly placed among them, heeding her mother's summons from the kitchen, Lillian donned an apron and helped with the final meal preparations, she meticulously arranged salads and sliced meats on the table, ensuring everything was perfectly set for their family dinner, as they gathered around the table, the atmosphere was filled with the warmth and joy of the season, a testament to Lillian's efforts to prioritize their bond and create new, happy memories together, the scent of reheated meat intertwined with the fresh aroma of pine, creating a backdrop for a Christmas feast brimming with warmth, laughter, and the promise. 
of cherished memories, laughter filled the air, mingling with the clinking of plates as snacks disappeared rapidly and the wine cast a rosy glow on everyone's cheeks, Jordan's mother, a whirlwind of activity, continually emerged from the kitchen with more dishes to replenish the spread when the evening progressed, the gathering shifted to the living room, where they nestled under blankets, enveloped in post-feast contentment, Jordan's mother assumed the role of Santa's helper, distributing gifts with joyous announcements, when it was Jordan's turn, he received an envelope from Lillian, sparking playful banter about its contents, but the discovery of travel vouchers to the Bahamas left the room gasping with excitement, although Jordan's reaction was unexpectedly troubled outside, on the chilly porch. Lillian's anticipation turned to dismay as Jordan revealed that his undisclosed job commitments would prevent him from joining the trip, her frustration deepened when his explanation remained elusive, further straining their relationship, Lillian's demand for transparency met Jordan's resigned smile and noncommittal shrug, signaling an impasse that left her feeling betrayed and isolated, with the sound of the door slamming behind her, Lillian retreated indoors, locking herself away to mourn the growing divide between her and Jordan, the sharp echo of the door slamming startled the others, but Lillian, overwhelmed and seeking solace, brushed off their concerns and retreated. Upstairs, curling up next to her bed, her heart heavy with the weight of their fractured relationship, Lillian let her tears run freely, and her silent cries were the only sound in the room, she could feel the emotional torment inside her, much when she could feel the hair tangles she coiled around her fingers in anguish, it took Lillian an hour to muster the will to get up and make her decision, she packed her luggage with a heavy heart, saying a quick and final goodbye to her parents, leaving. A lot of unspoken words behind, she gave Jordan an ultimatum, her voice calm despite the raging emotions inside of her, you're welcome home to discuss about your covert work, you'd better not show up until then, she nodded to her parents and turned to leave a sense of emptiness in her wake as she closed the door, Lillian faced the isolation of her choice for two days, despite calls from her parents, Jordan's father, and even Jordan himself, who failed to soften her decision, every exchange filled. With attempts to minimize her emotions and rationalize the concealment just strengthened her resolve, she was calm on the outside but furious within due to the accusations of immaturity and the notion that spouses should have access to their secrets, Jordan's key clicked gently in the lock, signaling his return, which was as quiet as his departure, he arrived with gifts. A quiet entreaty for forgiveness placed on the kitchen table along with some hidden candies meant as a peace offering, he waited outside the bedroom door, seeing Lillian engrossed in her reading, the scenario was a far cry from the chaos that had torn them apart, the air between them was packed with unspoken words and unspoken feelings when Lillian came out of the room, Jordan, sitting on the couch in the living room, called out to her to come, his tone was a mixture of nervousness and hope, please come in, let's speak, or do you still find fault with me, even though Lillian's reaction was straightforward, it was, filled with emotion, I am, she said, sitting down next to him. The closeness rekindling a comforting warmth in spite of their recent distance, her emotions erupted at the touch of Jordan, his hand on her shoulder, and the sight of his wedding band, her composure on the verge of breaking again in an attempt to reassure Lillian of his faithfulness, Jordan apologized from the bottom of his heart, however, Lillian's tolerance ran thin, and she became increasingly adamant about receiving information regarding his covert work, Lillian felt betrayed that others knew more about her husband's life than she did when she found out that Jordan had confided in their parents before her, Lillian began to wonder why Jordan's work was so incomprehensible, and he responded by telling her that her mother had advised against disclosing the facts with her, this just served to stoke the fire. The strain between him and his wife reached a breaking point when he was forced to choose between his secret profession and his marriage after completing one more assignment. Jordan didn't think twice to declare his allegiance to Lillian and to stop his late-night activities, Lillian was a little relieved that he promised to tell her everything in June, but she still decided to put her trust in him again, the couple continued their regular household activities throughout the evening, giving the impression that things were somewhat normal again, that night's mental calm was a welcome diversion from the storm of feelings Lillian had been fighting, and it proved that. She was willing to overlook Jordan's past transgressions, at least for the time being, resuming contact with Whitney was a first step in Lillian's recovery from her own loss, their previous intimacy, 
tainted by Lillian's battle with infertility, served as a reminder of the difficulties in maintaining a friendship and the anguish of unmet expectations, but even in the midst of the hesitant calm and reconciliation, Lillian couldn't help but notice the tension that existed between Jordan and Nathan. A tacit undercurrent in their social exchanges that alluded to unsolved problems and unspoken facts that were just waiting to be revealed, Jordan's response when Lillian told him her friend had contacted her with weekend plans was, to put it mildly, muted, he moaned, do I have to tag along, we are speaking about Whitney, what has become of you, evidently irritated, Lillian shot back, don't you want to meet her, will Nathan also be present, Jordan asked, attempting to assess the circumstances. Probably, mostly on weekends, he is at home, Whitney also recommended that we hang out at their location, she intends to prepare a cake, Lillian clarified, Jordan remained unenthusiastic, to be honest, I'd rather not run into him, he said, why ever not, Lillian pushed for a response, you know that he just irritates me, Jordan admitted, Lillian called Whitney later that day to inform her that Jordan would not be attending, Whitney seemed not to mind at all, in fact, she seemed a little relieved, as it happened, having Jordan around wasn't something Nathan was all that excited about, especially not at his house, and he'd expressed this to Whitney, as people age, they're meant to become more gentle, Whitney said, sounding a little let down, Jordan drove Lillian over to Whitney's despite the tension, it was a tense and silent vehicle ride, even though Whitney's apartment appeared familiar, there were alterations visible, the little crib had been replaced with a larger bed, a bookshelf and study, Desk had been added, and the collection of toys had increased, Whitney knew her buddy would adore a honey cake, so she made a special effort to create one, when she was presenting the cake, she remarked, it's unfortunate that Jordan wasn't there, he likes honey cake, with a nose scratch, Nathan added his voice, scammingly, maybe he would have if he wasn't so high and mighty, he murmured, there was an awkward silence that Lillian sought to break fast, Whitney, let's not let this get us down, would you? Please pack Jordan a slice, she said, my intention is not to ruin anyone's day, Nathan remarked, tinged with irony, unlike some people, Nathan, that's enough, Whitney said, taking issue with his tone, why not just state the obvious, unfazed, Nathan went on, it's very obvious that Jordan can be a tough nut, too stubborn for his own good, did he ever share why he's not fond of you, Lillian said, perplexed, Nathan dismissed it with a giggle, he thinks I'm no good, right Whitney threw around words like, Scoundrel, he said, Lillian paused and sipped her tea, it's perplexing, something more has to be included, how could you have possibly upset him to such an extent, as long as I've lived, I've never harmed a soul, Nathan remarked, half-jokingly, taking Whitney's saucer, after enjoying a mouthful of cake once again, he said, and I've always played it straight in my deals, never cheated anyone in an attempt to defuse the situation, Lillian admitted, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted. Sometimes, you know, to give back some of the treatment I get, let's not harbor resentment toward anyone, particularly not Jordan, and will you kindly forgive me, please, Nathan gave a noncommittal shrug, who could stay mad at friends, they decided to take a leisurely stroll to the neighboring park after enjoying the sweet delight, Nathan watched Peter when they walked, standing right behind Whitney with his arms encircling her, he would periodically join in on the ladies' conversation, Lillian, Toyed with the idea of telling anyone about Jordan's covert work, the canceled trips, and her parents' opinion of the entire ordeal, she sought a peaceful moment and felt the impulse to share her concerns with someone, Whitney pulled herself up to Lillian and held her hand tenderly, hey Lillian, you'd know if Jordan had a double life, there's undoubtedly more to it, and if your parents are aware of it, they're probably not prepared to share it just yet, however, they will eventually, they waited on the porch for Jordan to arrive so that Lillian could get a ride home as their visit came to an end, Nathan and Whitney said goodbye as his car got closer, Jordan stopped, turned off the engine, and got out, she gave Whitney a big hug and gave Nathan a reserved shake of his hand, and who's this young champ, he said, stroking Peter's hair and listening to his bravery in the playground, let's catch up again, soon, Jordan said before leaving, undoubtedly, Whitney nodded in agreement, Jordan asked, Whitney, how are you doing? How's she doing? What's new about them, exactly? Jordan listened obligingly as Lillian told him about the McGee's recent events. Whitney is in good health. Has Peter not improved? And how is everything doing at Nathan's job? Jordan questioned, puzzled by his curiosity. Lillian snapped back, why the sudden interest in his job? He didn't seem worth your time, in my opinion, just curious. 
Jordan said with a shrug, has he conned someone else recently? Lillian considered what? He had said, you know, I used to believe that perhaps you were right about him, however, I'm beginning to doubt that now, perhaps the problem is with you. Jordan laughed at her charge, so I'm the villain now. They both were immersed in their thoughts, and for the rest of the drive, their talk sank to quiet. Lillian felt a tornado of feeling swirl inside her when she lay close to Jordan, the intimacy she had loved felt oppressive now drowning her in a sea of hopelessness and bewilderment once. Her confidant, the guy alongside her now appeared to be a shadowy stranger, inciting a mixture of hatred and dread in her, she wanted so badly to scream and to get away from this mask, but she said nothing, pulled the blanket closer over herself, and wept in her own suppressed tears, the holidays were over, a facade of routine that could not conceal the widening rift in Lillian's heart. Every day seemed to pull her further away from reality and toward a performance in which she was cast as a character she could no longer identify with. Life was like an elaborate play, mornings brought with them memories of a woman she hardly recognized, her eyes colder than they had ever been. Lillian missed their rural home simplicity now that spring had arrived, seeing it as the ideal setting for healing their relationship's rifts, she hoped that the calm environment would allow for meaningful conversations and maybe even a peaceful resolution, no matter how difficult. But Destiny had other ideas, she was left to deal with the possibility of being alone when their parents graciously declined her invitation, blaming the oppressive heat. Jordan's frequent absences have become the norm when his professional duties also conveniently snatched him away, accepting with resignation. Lillian was determined to find solace in the peace and quiet of the countryside, moving out on her own, her heart aching but optimistic for a break. But her brittle calm was dashed when she saw Jordan's car, conspicuously out of place, when they arrived. She began to panic when the truth of her husband's dishonesty became increasingly apparent, and her breaths became short, harsh gasps, she stepped nervously up to the locked door, hesitant to turn the knob and choosing to knock instead, she steeled herself, not wanting to face whatever unforeseen betrayal waited on the other side, Lillian was about to face the truth she had been dreading for a long time since the facade of normalcy had collapsed. When Lillian prepared herself for the worst, the door. Unlocked, Jordan, Lillian said, obviously not anticipating him, Jordan stepped forward, surprise in his voice, Lillian, he said, obviously surprised, Lillian was so full of fear and bewilderment that she hardly noticed Jordan's perplexity, her eyes slid beyond him into the living room, where she noticed movement under a sofa blanket, with her heart racing. She hurried by Jordan while wearing her shoes and quickly pulled back the blanket to show a young, distraught boy instead of a secret lover. The child, maybe three years old, stared up at Jordan, feeling both hope and terror, he called out, Daddy, and held out his arms, Jordan picked up the boy with a gentleness Lillian had never seen, consoling him with words of gentleness and a kiss on the forehead, Lillian's words was only a whisper as her imagination raced over the sight, who is this, Jordan, your son, Jordan answered, the boy's teary eyes finding Lillian's as a wordless cry for comfort, Lillian's body tensed, ready for a conflict as a Maelstrom of emotions began to build inside her, sensing her anger building, Jordan begged her to calm down, please, let's avoid drawing hasty judgments, I will elucidate, Lillian was so shaken that she threw off her coat in a heap and stumbled to the kitchen, moving slowly like she was wading through thick fog, her attempt to quench her thirst resulted in a broken glass and a cut finger, her body eventually gave into a chair because it was so desperate for relief from the commotion, who is he? She repeated her demand, her tone more even but still heavy with weariness, reaching out to grasp the boy, Jordan said, this is Noah, Nathan's son, Lillian was clearly shocked, son of Nathan, how, Whitney is unaware of this, Jordan's disclosure made the mystery much more complex, no, not at all, Whitney is unaware of this, it's not simple, Lillian faced Jordan, accusing him of fabricating a story, her doubts and rage fighting for control of her mind, her faith in him wavered, but Jordan held her cool and advised her to ask Nathan for clarification. Reluctantly, despite all the emotions whirling around her, Lillian reached for her phone and dialed Nathan's number with quivering fingers. She was skeptical, but there was a glimmer of hope that Jordan's strange story might be true after all. Hello, Nathan, it's Lillian. Can we talk about Noah? With a hint of nervousness mixed with excitement, she questioned. Lillian was left in a state of nervous uncertainty when the connection became dead, and 
Then Nathan cut the conversation without warning, Lillian sat in the middle of the tranquil sounds of nature, confused and nervous, a far cry from the chaos screaming inside her, her phone rang again soon after, Nathan spoke up this time, his tone urgent, Lillian, you have to keep this completely hidden from Whitney, do you get it, as Lillian realized how serious the situation was, tears started to form in her eyes, Nathan, how could you have done this to her, Whitney has given you her entire life. She adores you so much, between sobbing, she managed to mutter, this will shatter her, desperation mixed with defensiveness was Nathan's response, I wonder what I was supposed to do, tell Whitney he's my son from a different mother, not in a manner, and if your spouse hadn't chosen to take the lead, you wouldn't even have to worry about all of this, once Lillian had made it clear to Nathan that Noah was solely his responsibility now. Nathan's rant faded into the background when Lillian's mind raced. She slowly set the phone down, reclining on the grass with the cool blades gently grazing her neck, amidst the chaos, a soothing realization washed over her, Jordan hadn't betrayed her, his actions were not as sinister as she had feared, with newfound clarity, Lillian returned indoors, ready to unravel the entire story Nathan's troubles began with an affair during one of his business trips, a fleeting connection that led to an unplanned pregnancy, despite Noah's birth, Nathan refused to acknowledge him, hoping the issue would resolve itself, however, when Noah's mother threatened to bring him to Nathan's doorstep, panic set in, desperate, Nathan turned to his aunt Leslie, pleading for temporary guardianship until he could devise a plan, although Leslie initially agreed, she soon realized she couldn't provide the care Noah needed, during a heated phone conversation with Nathan, Leslie found herself at a local diner, overwhelmed by the predicament, when she pondered her options, Jordan, recognizing her from their shared past, approached with a friendly greeting, his attention shifted to Noah, whom he affectionately called, Champ, misunderstanding Leslie's vague explanation of Noah's situation, Jordan shared a glimpse of his own struggles with starting a family, sensing a connection and a potential solution, Leslie took a leap of faith, encouraged by the serendipitous encounter, laying bare the complexities and heartaches that had led to this moment, Lillian shared Noah's story with Jordan, his heart went out to the little boy, abandoned by his own parents, driven by compassion and an unexpected connection, Jordan made a snap decision to take Noah under his wing, calling off work, he dedicated the entire day to the boy, quickly forming a bond that felt as natural as if they were truly family, for Jordan, the joy of spending time with Noah was unparalleled, despite Lillian's reservations about adoption, their numerous discussions on the matter never far from his mind, in the moment, none of that mattered, he was determined to make things work, convinced that a solution would present itself, meanwhile, Whitney, piecing together the puzzle of Jordan's absences and mysterious errands, was moved to tears by the unfolding story, Jordan's parents, too, were privy to this new chapter in their lives, supporting him when he navigated this unexpected journey for his part, Noah became so close to Jordan that it became difficult to say goodbye to him at night, with Jordan staying by his side until he fell asleep, Jordan was cleaning up the kitchen one day as Noah was absorbed in cartoons, thinking about their upcoming family river trip, this modest home scenario offered Lillian a peek into a life she had never dreamed about, nevertheless, she was struck to tears by Jordan's affection for Noah, feeling as though she were holding him in her own arms, but even in their newfound bliss, Lillian couldn't get rid of the sense that something was off between them. She expressed her worries one evening while Noah slept soundly and Jordan finished cleaning up from dinner. We can't hide this from Whitney, Jordan, that would not be proper, she is entitled to know the reality, Jordan nodded, eager to get rid of the burden, but Lillian's unwavering determination halted him, I ought to inform her first, it's just, Lillian, her heart heavy and her head full of possible scenarios, went to the apple tree for comfort because it was the location that gave her the most clarity and tranquility. There, among its blooming boughs, she called Whitney, preparing herself for a discussion that would alter her life forever. Lillian gathered her courage for the upcoming conversation after spending hours outside in the fresh air. There was a quiet tension in the house as Jordan and Noah returned from their time by the river, beaming, when Whitney opened the door and saw the seemingly content family. The atmosphere was thick with unspoken facts, her interest peaked at the sight of the strange child, creating a shadow in the space as a nervous hush descended, Whitney's carefree attitude turned serious when she realized how much the situation was weighing on everyone, 
her worried voice trailed off as she questioned what's going on, when there was no more room for deception, Lillian broke the quiet by admitting that Noah was his father, it was evident that Whitney was bewildered as she looked to Lillian and Jordan for clarification, both of whom were frightened by her intense stare. The room felt smaller as Lillian told the story, as if the walls were closing in. Around each new development, Whitney reeled, feeling as though the ground under her would give way at Jordan's interjection confirming the seriousness of the issue. Whitney's reaction was a mixture of shock and realizing what had happened. Her charge that Jordan had betrayed her was a genuine statement of her suffering, her trust destroyed by the information withheld. Maybe sensing that Lillian needed some space to process her friend's intense feelings, Jordan left quietly, leaving Lillian to console her buddy. They bonded through their shared grief and empathy as they sobbed together, providing a glimmer of comfort amidst the tumultuous emotions. Whitney and Noah developed a close bond that evening, and Whitney's voice filled the space with laughter and storytelling. With his eyes heavy from sleep, Noah listened closely while curled up in her arms, feeling reassured by her presence. Whitney spoke of brighter days ahead, and it was clear that she loved the young guy. Jordan became the cook for the evening, preparing a straightforward but filling supper using the day's leftovers while the rain started to pour outside and the windows opened, the garden's movement and the refreshing air seemed to release the stresses of the day and make room for fresh ideas and emotions emotionally swept away, Lillian's prior concerns about adoption vanished in the face of the strong attachment she could feel developing with Noah. She felt an unanticipated thrill at the idea of taking care of him, being there for him in his daily life, in the days that followed, Lillian took the lead in making sure Noah had a secure future, she worked with Jordan and Leslie to handle the legalities so that Noah would be safe, her days suddenly had meaning, and everything she did, from filing paperwork to choosing Noah's necessities, felt like a step closer to their future together, Jordan was astounded to see Lillian change, her behavior demonstrating her undying love for Noah, the energy of a family. Gathering to welcome their newest member filled the once quiet flat, their house became into a center of festivities, where family get-togethers were characterized by warmth from shared food, laughter, and music. Jordan's mother's fish pie came to represent these happy get-togethers and serve as a constant reminder of the love that united them all. Noah, who had once been viewed as a burden, was now at the center of a loving circle. And his laughter demonstrated the delight he brought to everyone. He was given the security and love he had been denied for a long time by Lillian, Jordan, and their families, and their love and care was a salve to his young heart. Fearful of facing Whitney's rightfully founded rage, Nathan abruptly vanished. He tried to bridge the gap with a quick return in gifts, but Whitney and her understanding parents quickly turned down his offer. His departure from their lives was symbolized by the act of leaving his possessions at the door. Lillian hurried to Whitney's sighed as soon as she heard the news, torn between her friend's suffering at Nathan's betrayal and her own newly discovered delight as Noah's mother, her heart was heavy, divided between the events that led to Noah's arrival and the happiness he brought into her life, Whitney had incredible fortitude in spite of the absence of her own parents. Even as she faced the terrifying prospect of becoming a single mother to twins in the near future, ever the problem solver, Lillian saw an opportunity to give Whitney and her soon-to-be babies the same familial support that had been around Noah. Over the next few days, Whitney's house became a bustling center of care and activity, with Jordan's parents acting as surrogate grandparents for Lillian, in addition to helping Whitney overcome the difficulties of raising twins. This support system gave both houses a sense of extended family and community, strengthening the bonds of love and support amongst them all. Above is today's story, if you like it. Please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.